Saturday, they showed a pretty decent clip or, you know, Ezra Miller said they didn't have enough footage for a trailer, but I kind of think they did. This was a bit of a teaser. And I don't think it got nearly as much attention as it should have, but I think there are several problems with the way it was presented. And I think with just a few little changes, it would have done gangbusters in terms of people talking about it. And there's some really good stuff here that we're gonna go over. So what are the two problems with why this, well, I think three problems and why this didn't trend. And it's easily fixable. So the first is that I think Ezra Miller did a very bad job introducing it. I think that he had a weird low key energy, which is weird because from what I've heard about him on the set of the movie, he is super nice to everyone and he is super engaged and really wants us to do well and is like very creatively all in. So why doesn't that come across in his introduction? It's really weird. And then also I thought his fashion choice is just didn't work. I mean, if he's gonna be bold, be bold. And Ezra Miller has been very bold in the past. He certainly knows how to do it. Uh, and also, Ezra Miller, I, I really respect him wanting to be a fashion icon in some ways, uh, although I don't think he does it as, as effectively as someone like Billy Porter. Um, and I think that's because I don't think Ezra Miller's choices are as focused as they should be. I think he more often than not serves as a distraction rather than, you know, from the material and uh, rather than elevating it. I think if he made choices that played in to what he was promoting, uh, I think that that would go a long way. So I think that if they had just not had him introduce this clip, it would have done a little better. Also, uh, missing from this whole preview are the humor, is the humor, the cleverness, and the scientific knowledge that made the, the Flash and Zack Snyder's cut so wonderful. We were all worried about Ezra Miller as this character after we saw Justice League, but then after we saw Zack Snyder's cut, we were like, this is fantastic. Like, really, really good stuff. Um, and I don't see, again, any of that here. And that's not to say it's not in the film, but for some reason it didn't make it into whatever they're calling this, this teaser of a teaser. And that's too bad because that's when Ezra Miller shines as the character. I love that he's not just funny, but he genuinely really, really intelligent. Uh, he's a scientist and I think that's pretty neat. Uh, also, as we learned from this, just hearing Michael Keaton's voice ain't enough because nobody cared. I think if they'd just had one shot of Michael Keaton, either in the cowl or as Bruce Wayne, because you remember when we saw Bruce Wayne on set? That's like, I tweeted about that. It's one of my most viewed tweets of all time, over a million impressions. People just love it. People love seeing Batman. Uh, and so if they just, it doesn't have to be Batman in the cowl, you know, Michael Keaton, it could have just been him as Bruce Wayne. And I think that would everyone would have gone nuts. Maybe it's too early. As I told you, I heard this movie's gonna get pushed because they just have so much VFX work to do on it. They haven't pushed it yet. They might keep their date, um, but you know, we'll see. Uh, but I, I think, you know, either you're showing stuff or you're not showing stuff. And, I, and Michael Keaton was spotted on the set. So we have seen him as Bruce Wayne in this movie. And so I think it would have been fine to have one shot. It's always better to have, make sure that your movie lands and that whatever you promote it, people talk about it rather than re the reverse. All right, but let's go through with, what the, through with what they did give us. I think there's good and bad stuff. All right, so we start out pulling up in a taxi outside Wayne Manor. And I thought the music here was very cool. We aren't quite there yet, but first let me just... So we have this great shot of him getting out of a central city taxi, one of the small ones, uh, and you can see it's the two Ezra Millers, also ruined by on-set shots of people who, who saw them filming. So I guess they felt, heck, everybody knows it already, let's just put it in the, in the, tra in the preview. And they did a very good job finding an Ezra Miller uh, body double and they could just put uh, his face on him digitally. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what this, who this double could be uh, momentarily. So anyway, we're there at Wayne Manor. It reminds me of so many people who've walked up to Wayne Manor, including, of course, Terry McGinnis, so famously. Uh, I think Bruce, this Bruce Wayne is about to have a lot of uh, men mentees, you know, uh, Flash, Supergirl. I told you they want him to do Batgirl, the new Batgirl. So we'll see. So they pull up 
And then this is where the music comes in when we enter Wayne Manor. And I think that Benjamin Wallfish, by the way, the music at the beginning of this very clip when they had the logo come up was magical. I love that score. I'm like, great things are going to happen. But here, they did a nice job bringing in elements, uh, set, uh, 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 hints. You know, I feel like we're de uh, describing a fine wine. Oh, do, I know what it is. Do I detect notes of Danny Elfman's Batman 1989 uh, score? I believe I do. Speaking of Batman 1989, that comic just did not work out. I'm sad because I was excited about it. All right, so anyway... So Bat, uh, Bruce Wayne is talking, Batman's talking, and he's being very Batman-y, and then he's like, let me try and think about what exactly you could do with this ability of yours. What could I do with it, or what can I make you do with it? You know, Bruce sees everything as a tool he can use. I love that about you, Bruce, baby. But we're focusing, of course, on Ezra Miller, uh, the two flashes, and this is our, uh, you know, our DCEU, or Zack Snyder timeline. Uh, Barry Allen. And so he turns this on and they cut to this, which is outside his house. And here we see the suit. And I like the light up. We actually see it. But I got to tell you, I don't know how flattering the lines are. He's got a little junk in the trunk there. I feel like he doesn't have a runner's physique. And it's weird to me because Ezra Miller is like super, super skinny. So I think that the latex suits both here and also on the Black Adam preview made both actors just look a little bit touch too big. Like there's just something wrong with it. Like it doesn't work. I mean, the flash should have a runner's build. So, and the lines should be used to kind of maybe, like, I don't understand with fashion, you do stuff like this and they should have a slimming effect. But here, the way the lines work, I'm like, you didn't do a slimming effect at all. As a matter of fact, I think you've played up his problem areas. So that's really bizarre to me. I am wondering what's going on in the back here uh, with that little residue on uh, the back. But I mean, I, don't, I think this could be very cool when he's running, although I like the lightning too. But there, some lightning was there when he came in, so we'll probably get that effect as well. I do, speaking of the Zack Snyder version, very much miss the Faraday cage because that was a practical idea that it would contain the energy that he was generating. I thought that was really cool. And so I'm like, well, why don't you need that anymore? So he's outside his house where bad stuff has happened to his mom, as we all know. And there he is walking. And I think he's walking up very carefully here because he's wondering, is this, that's why he's like so careful to touch her shoulder because his mother, of course, in his timeline or universe, multiverse, is dead. And that's why in Batman saying, you can go anywhere, why stay and fight to save this woman? It's because this is mom. And his dad, is, his fate is tied to her as well because his dad, of course, is wrongfully accused of the murder. And we know how hard Barry's working to, to get his dad uh, free. And it would be nice to save his mom in the process. And I, I wonder if that's his, uh, who is that, I wonder? So uh, here, Bruce Wayne is now saying, you've changed the past, can you change the future. And this, by the way, there are some different theories as to who this is. Batfleck will show up. His role, I continue to hear, is small. He will show up for the first third of the film, and then there will be a callback, I'm hearing, a quite touching one, at the end of the movie. Now, this looks like the rubberiness of his cowl, but I think his cowl is supposed to be a little bit more practical, and this might be the 1989 version, which, of course, uh, Michael Keaton so famously said he couldn't turn his head. Uh, there's another theory that this is, you know, um, that this version of Bruce is very uh, uh, cavalier and not as careful because he has a bit of a death wish because he no longer has Alfred with him. So this is just him after a long night. And he doesn't pick up after himself because Alfred's not there. I'd be like, the blood on the floor is a bit much, Bruce. So I wonder if he's looking at a bat suit here. He looks a little better in this suit. That looks a little more slimming. I like how expressive Ezra Miller's face is. That, that looks like Sasha Kaye, uh, uh, right? And that's the, whenever he has longer hair, that's the other flash, all right? That's the Barry Allen, I probably believe, of this timeline. So look, he's doing an old school, low key version of the flash suit. So that's kind of interesting that you could have different origin stories in a, in a, for a character within the same universe because of the multiverse. I think that's a really interesting idea. Now there's a theory going around, uh, a fan theory, which I'm hearing, you know, you know, I think there's some evidence to it, legit evidence, that, e that, Barry, um, that uh, Ezra Miller is playing Barry Allen and 
Maybe Eobard Thwain, aka the Reverse Flash, or maybe a different version of Barry Allen here will be the Reverse Flash. I was talking to my friends at uh, Flash Film News, and they told me about the fact that uh, Ezra Miller has talked about uh, mental illness and the importance of depicting that uh, appropriately. And I think it could be really interesting to explore the mental health issues of Barry's loss, how that could maybe twist a different version of Barry into the Reverse Flash. You know, some people thought that Ezra Miller's version of Barry Allen and the Zack Snyder movies was perhaps autistic, which I think would be really interesting. Uh, autistic people are, of course, very good at math and science. Uh, and that, you know, Flash Film News uh, was talking to me about this, uh, and they pointed out that maybe that's why it's so hard to get a, a read on who the villain in the film is, because it's not really a villain. You know, it's just someone who has had a tragic situation happen to them, and Barry has to deal with it. So I think that's really interesting. I, would, I think that would actually be a very beneficial to the film to discuss that. Although, they're, discover they're discussing mental illness in the Batman, too. So, I mean, and this is the same studio. I would be like, you can't both do that discussion. They're like, oh, yes, we can. And I'm like, all right, let's see what everybody says. So here's the flash ring, which he, of course, is wearing in the film. And that's the other Barry Allen, Ezra Miller behind him. So I guess they're having a conversation maybe about it. And I wonder whose ring that is. His costume is supposed to fit in there. That's real old school comic booky. I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm not a hardcore Flash fan either. Some of you might be like, the costume better be in the ring, damn it. And then you'll be very happy. So there is our Barry. And I got to tell you again, they got to do something with that crotch area, too. I'd be like, whoa, man. You know, uh, but again, this I don't think is the most flattering suit to Ezra Miller. I think the other suit looked a little better. I always appreciate light up effects, but the other suit had that with the lightning. So I'm not against this, but so far, and I'd be like, for the love of God, could, do we have to shoot him from underneath and like looking right at his crotch with him pushing it out? Maybe some of you are like, oh, we do, but I'm not feeling it but he's in the Batcave. And then they have this moment where we see the back of Batman's head. That looks a lot like the Batcave though, by the way. This is the most Batcave-y Batcave I've ever seen in a movie. And I appreciate that. And there's the back of his head. And he's like, I can't turn my head in this thing. Did any other multiverses you go to, do they have the ability to turn the head? And like, do they? That looks pretty cool though. Remember when Catwoman grabbed his ears and kicked him in the face? That was hilarious, but I thought very disrespectful. And showed some of the problems with having handles on your head. <laughs> That's almost as bad as a cape. And Nemo would be like, what the heck? So here, this was a little too Stranger Things like to me, having, you know, all these younger versions of the character. And then he says, are you in? And I'm like, well, I don't know how I feel about that line. He looks a little better here. Looks a little more slimming. Is that even the light up suit? Because I wonder where the light up lines have gone. But, and then you can see the makeshift do it yourself suit that the other uh, Ezra Miller has. Ezra Miller has great facial structure, though. He looks really good on film. And there's Sasha. You can't quite see her suit at all, but we've, of course, seen on-set photos, and I think she's going to look phenomenal. I've only heard fantastic things about her. Of course he's in. There would be no movie if he was like, you know what? I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> and again, I love the music for this. And then here, of course, this is, so this is the other Barry, or, you know, we'll see what his name is. And of course, that's the classic Batmobile. You'd think he would have upgraded this stuff a little bit since the 1989 movie. We'll see. Maybe he has. Maybe that's why they haven't totally shown it. But I'm excited. You know, but nostalgia only goes so far. you got to have a really good story, too. And that's the, that's the challenge for all these multiverse movies that are bringing back classic characters in both the Marvel and DC films. So what do you think? Why do you, do you, what are your thoughts as to why this didn't totally connect on Saturday? What do you like? What do you not like? Uh, what are your theories? Share all that down below. Thanks for going over this with me. Thank you for your patience. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.